I've done most of these things since either I started my business or really recently, and they've either let me quit my job to resell full time and pursue other passions. But honestly, more importantly, they've helped me to have way less stress in my business. And ultimately, you want your business to serve you. You don't want to just have to continually worry about it because that's what I've done for most of the time that I've been an Amazon seller. And I'm sure most of you guys can relate. Now, the first thing has to do with inventory management once my stuff is already at Amazon. And there's not necessarily a specific order for each of these. It's just four of the things that have moved the needle the most for me. But let's leave this for a second and head over to my computer so I can show you what I'm talking about. Now, there are two things that I haven't been great about in my business. One of them has just lost me some money, which we're going to get back today. The other one has caused me a lot of unneeded stress. Let's focus on the stress one first, because even though the money's important, the stress is arguably more so. I'm not sure if anyone else has a specific name for it, but I call this first thing purging listings. So we're going to actually head over into Seller Central real quick, and we're going to go and manage our inventory. Now, the reason this is important, especially as a reseller, is that when you're picking stuff up from places like Ross and Marshalls and even sometimes Walmart on clearance, it's not stuff that you can easily get back. And if you have good rules, then you're gonna be selling out of your stuff relatively quickly, and there might be something that you've bought maybe months ago that still has a listing on Amazon for you, but you sold out of it the first week that you got it. And that's happened to me so many times, and so recently I've started purging more of my listings. Let me show you quickly how to do that. Inactive listings right here. What we're actually gonna do is click for this available right here, and that way we'll have it sort by all the ones that do have active listings and all the ones that don't. So as you can see, all of these have zero units available, but there's actually two different types of zero unit. The first one is this blue one where if you hit the drop down, you can see that there's actually some inventory. There's one that's unfulfillable. And so I'm not necessarily going to purge this. The other type of zero inventory listings are these ones that are black, which means that there's no inventory available and there's no inventory that will become available either through FC transfer or there's a customer order that's pending. We're going to actually go into all the listings that are that black zero. And if I don't think I'm going to get more of it, then I'm going to purge the listing and actually end up deleting it. So back in manage inventory, we're going to look for all the ones that are black that I don't don't think I'm going to be able to buy again. So this one I am going to buy again. This one I am going to buy again. This one I don't think so. So we'll go ahead and click this box over here. This one, I think I will buy again. This one, I don't think so. Click it. It's not going to get more of because those are things that I found on clearance at Walmart. Clearance at Walmart. This one, we are going to worry about because we're going to talk about that in a second. But first, I'll just show you with these couple listings. You just go up here, action on the five selected. I delete the products and listings, and this is going to remove my SKUs. Yes, continue. And now those are gone. Sometimes it takes up to 15 minutes or 24 hours, but those are going to be out of my inventory. And the important reason for that is emails that I get all the time from Amazon on listings that I'm not even on. Let me show you one that I literally got two days ago when I was planning on recording this video. This email right here, Amazon Seller Central Action Required Important Information About Your Product Listing. And we can see that there's actually two SKUs, and it says that we are contacting you because you have to put compliance documents. Since it has my SKU number, we're just going do the SKU instead of the ASIN, go back over into Seller Central, manage inventory, and search it. This one, okay, so it does have one available, so I am going to have to go and do that compliance document, but I'll do that later. The other one, this. Nothing available, and it's black. And I actually remember that's something that I bought on clearance, I think last September or October at Academy, and they sold out. So, deleting that listing real quick. I also hit close listings on these. I honestly don't know which one you're supposed to do, so I just do both of them, and it's always worked out. So that's something that I'm in the process of doing with literally all the listings that I don't have any active inventory or plan on sending inventory to Amazon. First off, that'll clear up my listings. It'll make repricing cheaper, because a lot of repricers are based on the number of listings that you have. Plus, it'll lower your stress, because you won't get as many emails that you don't even have listings for, which happens to me probably once a month and freaks me out. So I'd rather not deal with that. The second inventory management thing that we're gonna look at is reconciling your shipments with Amazon. Especially when you're sending in a lot of items or small items, sometimes they'll get wrong what you've actually shipped. And this is really frustrating because sometimes I'll reconcile shipments and they won't do anything, but there is still some money on the table and I have gotten some money back. So if we go up here into inventory manage FBA shipments, then we can look and see that a lot of our things are closed and they say expected unit 630, but there's only 627 that have been received. 22 expected, 22 received, so that's good, good. So I might go through on some of these and try to find those three units and Amazon will actually reimburse me if they can't find it. But what's most important for me is this one where it says one unit expected, zero units received, which is supremely stupid because it's only one package with one unit. How can you receive the package but not receive the unit? So let's try to fix that and see if Amazon will be nice to us or just fair. We'll go to track shipment. So we'll go over here to reconcile the shipment. So we can see that it's just this one product. One was shipped, zero were located. And so there's a negative one discrepancy. And so missing, please research or you can say units not shipped. We'll go to missing, please research. And this is where you're gonna have to upload documents. Proof of purchase, which it says invoice. But I'll normally just put in my receipt. And I did take a picture of a receipt that 
that has that unit on it. So you can see we have that snorkel at the very top there. So I'm gonna go ahead and send that to my computer real quick. Upload that. I just dragged it over onto there and just hit upload. And then it says provide more information. If I've sent multiple boxes, I'll say I sent three boxes and one was missed. For this one, I'm just gonna say sent it in bubble mailer. Then we'll go ahead and preview the request. And we we'll can see the SKU, the title, the discrepancy, missing please research. We attached document and it says sent in bubble mailer, submit. And then it's just gonna act as any other case. And so they'll email me when they end up researching that. Sometimes they find it, sometimes they don't. It's really annoying when they say that they've researched something and I know for sure that I sent it in and they can't find it because it just feels like they're stealing inventory. But that seems to be one of the prices you have to pay. It doesn't seem fair, but that's what you gotta do. So reconcile your shipments and you can get some money back, purge your listing so that you can save some money on repricers, but also just save the hassle of dealing with a lot of those stupid emails. The second major thing that's helped me with my business is actually engaging with the reseller community. One of the main ways that I got started reselling was through watching YouTube videos, but I've also found that there are various Facebook communities that I'm in that are nice to interact with because they are different bolos, like things to look out for, but they also help me to think through other ways to resell because everybody has a little bit different business model, even just kind of Working in the comments is helpful. Honestly, more so than those Facebook groups though, are just watching other YouTube videos. And that's been one of the ways that I found out a lot about various software that I use, repricers, but also other business models to try, like some stuff that's gonna be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So subscribe for that. But one of the things I love most is actually creating content for the community because you guys in the comments have given me so many great ideas and helps with my businesses so that I can run them more efficiently. And you've helped me out a lot with like potential IP claims and brands to watch out for. So definitely check out the comments in these videos if you do need some help getting started reselling or just leave a comment yourself and I can try to help out. And the last part of engaging with the reseller community is leaving a like on this video because that really does help to get it to more people. I have to head out in like five minutes to go to counseling so I'm gonna finish up doing this myself and then we'll get on the road and we can talk about the third and the fourth thing that are really important in your business. Okay, I really gotta head out but what's, what's this? Oh, number three. The numbers. Of course I just spilled on my freaking number thing. And I know I said that this was four things that you should worry about in your Amazon business, but I feel like I'm really bad at making short videos. So there's three parts of numbers that you should worry about. And I think worry about them is a pretty strong word. They're just the things that'll be good for you to know so that you can estimate your profit correctly and allocate your money to what you actually want to in the business so that you can run your business and your business doesn't running you. Unsurprisingly, I'm already a little bit late. So we're gonna go to counseling and then talk about sourcing numbers by actually hitting up a raw. Jeez, the rain is starting to come down, but now that counseling has healed me, let's talk about these sourcing numbers and and I got a couple returns to make and let's find some inventory at Ross to talk through what to look for when sourcing. So I found some products that'll be good examples, but these are the numbers that we're worried about. First is the return on investment. Now this is gonna be your potential profit. Obviously, since you're sourcing it, you don't know if it's gonna be your profit yet, divided by your buy cost. You should have a target for this, but also have a minimum that you're willing to take. So real quick, let's take a look at this. I saw some of this in different colorways and actually have made a lot of money on it. It costs $12.99. It's only selling as we could see for $18.89, which you only get back $12.91. So if we put in $12.99, our return on investment, it's gonna spit out for us over here, negative 6.65%. So obviously if it's negative, even if both of the other numbers that I'm gonna talk about are great, you don't wanna worry about that. Now right now I am using Scoutify 2, which is how I prefer to source, but if we were to just go over to the Amazon seller app, which is free, we'll search it up real quick, and you just click into this one that says the fees on it. Since I prefer to do everything FBA, we'll hit Amazon fulfilled up here, and then we can put in our buy cost. So cost of purchase, $12.99. Don't forget about taxes though, wherever you are, we'll just put in $12.99 to make my life easier, so I don't have to calculate that. And then you also need to ship it into Amazon. That's already assumed in my Scoutify 2, since I put that in my settings, and I assume that it's gonna to be about 50 cents per pound and now it's going to show us that our profit is negative 107 so we would get that negative six percent by dividing 1.07 divided by 12.99 obviously making a negative is negative eight percent so you need to make sure you have a positive return on investment i choose to have my target be a hundred percent return on investment that way if stuff reprices and it drops down then i'll be able to still make money on it and then my minimum is normally around 50 percent if this number is good and that number is the sales rank. The sales rank corresponds to each individual item. They'll all have different sales ranks, which will be a number out of the total number of items that are in a category. So let's scan this real quick. It's a phone case. When we pull it up, we can see at the very top over here that the sales rank of this item is 1,530. 30 out of 36 million in electronics. The lower the number, the better. The number one sales rank is gonna be the thing that sells the most on Amazon, but this number fluctuates as items sell. So if we were to scan the same thing tomorrow, it would be a different sales rank more than likely. I tend to shoot for sales rank under 200,000 in almost every category that I sell, but the sales rank isn't gonna tell you everything about an item. If I'm questionable as to whether a sales rank is good or not, then we're actually gonna look at the sales velocity, which I cheated a little bit on because it's not technically a number. Normally you'll be able to determine sales velocity 
based on Keepa charts, and all sales velocity is, is the number of times something has sold. And obviously the faster selling an item is, the better it is. What's interesting is sales rank can be a little bit misleading. So if we take this product, which is a pair of socks, we can see that the sales rank is 366,000. I've sold a lot in this sports and outdoors category in 366,000 rank. But if we look at the Keepa chart, which I do through looking at Scout IQ, another app that I have, we see that every time this dips down is gonna be a sale. The last time it sold was there. So even though it's 366,000, and I would think that it would sell a little bit, it doesn't look like it does. But if we look at this, the rank is 644,000, so almost double. If we look at the same chart, it sold one, two, three, four times in the last three months, which isn't a lot, but it's definitely more than once. The other thing that's crazy about that is this rank is out of 27 million, whereas the rank on this item, which sells more, is out of only 6.9 million, so about 7 million. So even though proportionally even the rank is way worse, it sells more than the other one, which is why sometimes you should look at the sales velocity beyond just the sales rank. That was weird. I'm pretty sure the guy who was standing behind me for like five minutes while I was filming that last part, I guess he's the manager of the store or something. It's not the same manager that's on the sign, but he told me that it's against Ross policy to film in the stores, which I looked up and it doesn't seem like it is unless it's not a public policy. He says his associates can't, so I can't either, which is weird. But after you actually find items that are good to buy, so they're within your ROI targets and they have either a good sales rank and a good sales velocity that you're comfortable with, next you're gonna have to worry about actually pricing your items and those pricing numbers. To be honest, this is pretty simple. You're gonna have your buy cost and then your minimum and maximum prices. Obviously, you're gonna know your buy costs. You're gonna need to put that into your inventory system, whether you use inventory lab, something else, or if you just put it on Amazon, I guess, you'll just have to keep track of that somewhere. Sounds like a pain in the butt though. But the reason that you need to do this is so that you can reprice your items because you need to stay competitive on Amazon in order to win the buy box. Now, I know some people do manually reprice. I just prefer to get a repricer because it's gonna make your life so much easier. I have used reprice it, so necessarily recommend them, but I know some people who do sell more than me, even on this channel, they've commented before that they still like using it. I'm currently testing out Be Cool and I'm really happy with how it's going. And they've actually been in contact with me about potentially getting you guys a much better affiliate deal than if you were to just go and sign up for their normal 30 day trial. I'll have an affiliate link below for them and it'll lay out a little bit more of the free trial and what you'll actually be able to get, which is exclusive to the link. But I've been really enjoying it so far and you really should just get a repricer to make your life so much easier. Your sales will boost the second that you do it or the day that you do it because there will be a machine that's continually updating your prices to stay competitive in the algorithms. So when you're setting your minimum and your maximum, prices, there are a couple things to think about. You do need to set a maximum on a lot of repricers because if you just set an arbitrary maximum like $100 or $1,000, you can get a lot of stranded inventory, which is something that I've had to deal with as I've changed over my repricer. But this is where you could also look at your target return on investment and set your minimum prices on that target return on investment. And then maybe if it's been like three or six months after and you still haven't been able to sell it, you can drop that down. But that's one of the ways that your sourcing numbers and your pricing numbers can work together. Okay, so now that you bought everything and sold everything, you have to get to the last and arguably most important set of numbers which are your actual sales numbers. Now, I haven't heard of a lot of people talk about this, and I will have a full video coming out about this in just a couple of days. This is basically what you need to know from your sales numbers. First is your cash flow percentage. This might sound a little daunting. It's pretty simple. Let me explain it to you. It's going to be your Amazon payout divided by the total amount of sales. So if you sold $100 a day over two weeks, it's $1,400 worth of sales. The cash flow percentage is the percentage that Amazon pays out to you after fees, refunds, all of that jazz. This is a little hard to do with your first or second shipments because you have an Amazon reserve, but after those first couple, it kind of equalizes out. So if Amazon gave you $700 of that $1,400, your cash flow percentage is equal to 50%. Mine is right around 45 to 55%. Just depends on what I'm selling and how much profit I'm making because that's ultimately important. And similar to the next one, which is the profit percentage. It looks a little bit more complicated, but it's really not. It's the part of the sales that you make that are profit. So not just cash flow back to you, but it's your gross profit, which is the payout minus what you paid for the inventory that sold. So Amazon's taking their cut, and this is what it would be if you paid back all of the inventory that you bought. And then you also divide that by sales to get your profit percentage. So if you sold $1,400 worth of inventory, if you paid $350 for all of that, Amazon took their 700, then I mean you get 700 minus 350, then you have 350 divided by 1,400, which is 25% is your profit percentage, which is important because of what we'll get to next. But this is a good thing to track 
because it'll tell you how well your pricing strategies and your repricer are working. Mine right now is only about 20 to 25% and it's been going down because my repricer has been going a little bit crazy, which is why I changed. And my new repricer, I've already seen an uptick in my profit percentage and I'm hoping to get it upwards of 30% overall. These are more important tracking numbers. Here are the numbers that are actually gonna move the needle in your business though. And these are the revenue allocation percentages. This is basically what I'm gonna be making that other video on because it's really, really, really important in any business. This is just what I use for Amazon specifically and I'll make a more in-depth video on it later. But your revenue is gonna be your Amazon payout. Amazon's taking their fees off the top anyways, so you don't see any of that money. Your revenue is gonna be what they pay out to you to your bank account. Now this money needs to go a bunch of different places. First off, you need to pay yourself or set that at zero for a while as you grow your business, which is what I did for the first couple, four or five months in my business, you need to pay operating expenses because even though that $40 a month of a fee for Amazon is going to be straight taken off the top, you're still going to have to pay for things like your softwares, like inventory labs or a repricer. You're going to need to pay for poly bags. You're going to need to pay for shipping materials. All that stuff is going to come out of operating expenses. And it's nice that money directly allocated for that so that you know that you have enough money to pay for your operation. Next is going to be profit, which I think is a little bit different than owner pay because this is essentially fun money for you. I have this as 0.1% of my revenue, so not a lot of money, but this is money that every quarter we could take out and use for whatever we want to just rewarding ourselves for being business owners and actually having made money taxes are important don't forget about those whatever I take out in owner pay plus profit I keep 30 or 40 percent in taxes in a separate bank account that I never touch until tax time and then it goes to the government and whatever doesn't go to the government I'll put in my retained earnings account which is this last one right here re and that's gonna be used for either furthering the business or growing another business or in my case building out this van that we're in so that we can live in it because we're creating a business around this as well and then this last account, this inventory account, is why you need to know those other numbers so that you can allocate the correct amount of money to your inventory and then be able to use the rest of it to pay the rest of this. So the minimum amount that you should use for your inventory is going to be one minus your profit percentage divided by your cash flow percentage. Now we'll get into this in a different video. You can trust me on this one, but the reason this is important is because remember in our example, our profit percentage was 25%. Our cash flow percentage was 50%, so one minus 50% is also 50%, which means that from the money that we get back from Amazon, 50% of it minimum needs to go to inventory in order to make sure that we're not going into further debt. I like to round this number up, that way I can eventually get into an inventory surplus, which is what I'm working on this quarter of my business. But these are the accounts that you should at least think about whether or not you have them in your business. This is where your money is gonna be able to go after you pay off all of your inventory. Look, I know that that is a lot of numbers to worry about and you can definitely take it one at a time. I'm just a numbers nerd, so I'm hoping I can help you do a lot of the thinking if you're not inclined to numbers like I am. But now let's head over to the post office, drop this guy off and get into the four things that you should do in your FBA business to become the best reseller that you can. So the fourth thing that I'm gonna talk about is honestly what's allowed me to have way less stress in my Amazon business and continually so as I continue to do the second part of it. The first thing is to actually just get your personal finances in order. Now this will definitely help you become a much better Amazon seller. I forgot to unlock my door. Because you'll know how much money you actually need to live. And oftentimes if you start tracking your expenses and everything, it's less than what you might have previously thought. This is honestly one of the main things that allowed me to quit my job so soon because we didn't need to make a lot of money in order to survive. It'd be great to have more money and that's what we're working toward. But I was able to quit my job with a really, relatively low take home income from my Amazon business because that way I'd be able to have the freedom to work on my YouTube channel as well as to just spend more time doing things that I wanted to. Not having to answer to a boss, that's great. I wouldn't have known that if I didn't get my personal finances in order and I'll link a playlist if you need to start doing that for yourself. The second thing is actually related to this package. Now you might think that this was some super smart way for me to like tie in the very beginning of the video and the end. Truth, I just wanted to get an interesting opening shot and I thought of this in the middle of the video. But obviously this isn't for my Amazon business. It's for eBay. And the reason that's really important is because not only are my personal finances in order, but I'm working to actively diversify my income streams. Like that parking job? pretty good. You're able to make so much money on just Amazon or just eBay or any of these other sources. And in a lot of cases, it's really advisable to just focus on one thing and do a lot of work towards that. But that's really only if something is working. The reason I don't necessarily like that for Amazon, especially as a reseller, is that it's pretty easy to get kicked off the platform if you make a couple of wrong moves. I have gotten some IP claims that I don't think were deserved and a couple other mistakes by me and bad customer service scores and who knows whether or not I'll be able to get the buy box at some point in the future. Obviously, you wanna do everything that you can to eliminate against that, but you're not really in total control of this income source since you're playing on Amazon's playground. So whether you just diversify your reselling by not only selling on Amazon, but also on eBay or Mercari or Poshmark or these other places, which I've been doing, but I'm actually getting out of because I feel like it's taking more of my time and I've opened up another income source. 
which is something else that you can do, which is creating a YouTube channel. This one is a lot harder and a lot more upfront time, but it's probably the most passive one of these income sources. You could also just have a normal job, which is what I did have when I started selling on Amazon, and it's what allowed me to scale my business quickly because I didn't have to take any money out of it for five or six months, and I could just pay back all the inventory and buy more inventory and not have to worry about taking any money out. Or if you have another business, you can run that. And the thing is too, reselling isn't the most fun thing for everybody, but it is a really fast way that you could start making money and leave your nine to five, which is what I was able to do quickly because I wanted to create this YouTube channel, travel and make videos, which is way more interesting to me than just reselling all the time. So by starting one of these, maybe even as a side hustle to the side hustle of reselling while you have a job or quitting your job and reselling and starting one of these to eventually become your full-time business is a really viable way to make some of your dreams and your dream businesses happen. One last thing you can do is watch this video if you want to get another one of those income sources, which is how I changed my eBay business model to be better for me, but it still wasn't good enough, so I'm gonna be done with it, but you can take my business model and run with it. Or this playlist will help get your personal finances in order. Hope this helps. Peace.